So hello all, my name's David, and you are welcome to David's Bird Room. Come on in. Well now, I'm actually in my third year of sharing my Bird Room with you all out there. So we're now into what we call Season 3, Episode 1. In this episode, I'm going to let you see what's been happening here in the Bird Room. It's now the beginning of March 2023. I'm going to show you a wee bit of my holiday in Australia. Stay tuned to the end. You're going to see some lovely birds at the end. The sights and sounds of Australia. Stay tuned for that. Well, I hope you all have been keeping well and your birds are in good shape. And I know quite a few out there have actually started breeding. Because I can see some of the to my Facebook friends, my new group, there's people out there have young birds in the nest, they have chicks, they've all been bits already, so good luck and I hope you all have a good, good day. Well here as you can see, behind me, and as I said, beginning of March 23, no breeding preparation done as yet. All my hands, they're so on the flight pages. All my cupboards, still in the big pages, they're all still in their winter quarters. And that's how I'm going to work them. They're staying there till they're set and ready and they're really telling me what they I am not pushing them on. Plenty of things. I think I'm being reason for that this year. Every year you do these things up, you tweak and you change and whatnot. But what I'm going to try this year is get my canaries breathing. In line with my native fences, my British birds, my systems, my red holes, and my mules. So they're all outside and outdoor flight. Same again, no pairing up, all flying free within the flight. But they'll not really come in to Britain until beginning of April, mid April. So I want to try and keep my season all, all together. Keep the canaries, keep the native birds all coming together. So I'm in no hurry. No extended lights, no heat, nothing. What I've been giving them, and you may have seen on one of the Facebook ones, my eggs are. Well, this year, the eggs that I've been giving, I've been lucky enough, I've got a really constant supply of nice, fresh eggs, and I'm mixing up my own eggs. Now, thanks to a man by the name of Jay Bunker, New York, Jay from Canada, two made this eat up. I've been born in eggs, mixing eggs all my life, but Jay mixes shells, the whole lot, the complete egg, all together. So when other birds are getting, they're getting the shell, the integra, calcium, all in it. So I'm doing that this year, mixing it all up, and the only thing I'm adding to that is frozen peas. So I the frozen peas, mash the whole lot all together, and then a small sprinkle of any commercial kind of brand of acres, whatever brand of your own choice. I'm using that at the moment. I'm using King. I'm not getting that, not getting sponsored for that. I'm using King acres only because that's what's there. And that's all that does generally. It blends it all together. It dries up a wee bit because the egg, the piece of syrup, it can be very mushy. Put the egg through them. Makes a nice, nice, nice and soft one. So that's all my birds are getting out. Ah, not rushing them. As you can see here, as you can hear here, the cock birds are singing mad. Don't let that fool you. Just because your cock birds are singing doesn't mean they're ready for breeding. Cock and I will sing all year round, from right through the whole season. Doesn't mean he's ready for breeding. Don't let a singing bird show you to think of a breeding season. Just keep that in mind. Um, my mules, they're just flying free in the feet top right. I have over on the other side. I'm going to swing this around. Let's see if we swing this around. Back side, over here, and the two mule pairs. Hybrid pairs. I have the whole thing 
and an egg. We have a blue tank and a brown red bull. And we have a blue tank and a normal red bull. So there's two hydrogen pairs and one new pair. But also among the other canaries. Let's swing it back around again. Swing it back around. And let's see what's happening here. So, this view, what we have here, the hand canaries and the plates. As you can see, they're all in good shape, happy and healthy, turn away. Cupboards, they're in this plate. So they can get the cupboards. You get to see each other, the cupboards can fling away the hand, you know they're there, you can't get at them until they get paired up. But, happy and healthy, singing away. That's the way I like to keep them. That's all that really has happened here. Here at Burgum at the moment. Not rushing on test, not rushing on test. Let nature work itself out. When you watch outside, see what the wild birds are doing. When I see the wild birds all kicking in, I get a bit of heat out there of my wheat plants start growing out in the greenhouse I know myself, getting warmer, ready to get out of it. Because what I do for my own birds as well, I grow my own vegetables. As much spinach as I can get from lettuce, any kind of greens is all I got there. I grew it all myself. So once that's all grown in the greenhouse, I know myself, it's time to go. And going to go naturally and naturally. I'll keep you all updated on how that happens. So, no other treatment. Natural, natural. Keep it going as possible out there. So, during the week, the Northern Ireland Colour Canary Association Stroke CCBA Zone had their AGM. We haven't had an AGM for a few years because of the lockdown and all of the pieces. But recently, David Ramsey, our secretary, has organised a meeting online. Now, that gives everybody a chance to actually attend the AGM. In years past, we were called an AGM. And because of the sort of area distance from all the different members, some of our members spent a four hour round trip to attend the AGM. We're all scattered within the kind of one hour, two hour, three hour radius. So some of us one hour, two hours to get to an AGM so, but what I'm saying, the past AGMs we had, we were lucky to have a very small handful of members attend. At our AGM, online, we had 11 members attend from all over Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. It was fantastic to see it. The modern technology of the phone, the Zoom meetings, Absolutely brilliant. Business was all done. Got to see everybody. Everybody knows exactly what's been happening with the club. Everything is open and transparent. It's been fantastic. It is the way forward. And I just like again, thank you, Ramsey, for organizing that. Brilliant. So, way forward. Really good. Really enjoyed that meeting. So, everybody that was there, attended. Thank you all for showing your faces, giving your input, and I hope you see you all during the show season 2023. Also, a big, big shout out to all the new members of the Northern Ireland Colour Canary Association. I'm feeling really positive of the future of Colour Canaries here in Ireland. Last year, I started what are called the David Burgum Colour Canary Challenge. I had a lot of the top Colour Canary breeders, North and South, all the native birds, to new members, new people out there that never ever kept Colour Canaries before. We gave them a pair of Canaries. And all we asked for those people to do in this challenge was to accept a pair of Canaries, breed from them, 
get those young ones out on the show bench this upcoming year. All the high had to do was show at one CBS show and one, a one of any of the specialist uh, colour canary shows in Ireland, North or South. Now we have, I think it's around 11 or so, the challengers who took up the challenge. I'm feeling really positive that I'm going to see more colour canaries on the show bench here in Ireland, North and South, and it's actually even spread across the UK because there's one lad, very keen lad, Carol. Carol Burgum, you know who he is, he's on YouTube, check him out. Carol has took up a pair of the colour canaries, so he, won, he is the first guy uh, in England to take up the challenge. All the rest of the boys is here in Ireland. Here in Ireland, we needed it. I was at judging last year, there was nobody there, there was few boys on it. But listen, I'm really, really positive. Looking forward to seeing you guys getting those young birds on the show bench this year. Cracking job. Keep it up, lads. And even keep, keep me up to date on how you're getting on during this breeding season. How the birds are doing. If you need any advice, just ask any of the senior members of the Northern Ireland Colour Canary Association. They're there, they're willing to help, they will help out. So, cracking job boys, keep up the good work. We great to see online meetings, recommend it. Fantastic. Keep it going lads. Let you see a few birds and listen to a few birds that I came across my visit to Australia. It's funny when you go out there, the noises. This is so different from what you hear in the UK and Ireland. It's a different sound. And I would always go hear all my own different birds outside. I can identify the noises of all the different song birds that they all make. Over there, jumping all together. Really nice. Here's the clip. Hope you enjoy. So, in this episode, I'm going to share with you the birds that I have seen whilst here in beautiful Australia. Come on in. So, so far, as out for the walk, I came across a very strange, strange looking nest. Just built on the top of a tree, very open. I had to figure out what kind of bird had built a nest like that? So I sat for a while and then I heard what it was. Didn't actually at that point get to see the bird, but the sound was very distinctive. And it turned out to be the nest of a kookaburra. Such a strange looking nest. All out in the open, but I'm sure the kookaburra has has no no natural predators. Going by the looks of that nest, because it's not hid from anything, it's up in a tree, out in the open. Such an amazing sight. On the first day in land here, I saw this little bird sitting on a reel. I look up, and to me it looked, looked like a young swallow. But the more I looked into it, it actually was called a welcome swallow. It was a juvenile swallow, so that's where the nest site was, and that young one, as you can see in this picture here, had just come out of the nest and was sitting on this railing. A welcome swallow, just to say hello and welcome to Australia, Davy. So today was one of those cooler days, now one o'clock in the afternoon. I think the temperature is around 23, 24. So it's been one of the cooler days. And it's actually one of the nicer days to come out for a wee walk around and investigate and see what's happening. So 
So on one of my first days here, I came across this, this beautiful, beautiful flowering tree with great big orange flowers on it. Me not being a native of Australia, I didn't actually know the name of the tree. But the tree was alive with birds. Little screeching and crying in the middle of the trees, searching to get the nectar off these flowers. In this week's up, you can see the tree. You barely see the birds, but the tree was full of these little birds. And here we have more lorikeets flying over my head. Just listen. The beautiful green red flash of the lorikeet. So a very common sight around here is the ibis. Can be seen in the gardens and the parks, walking around your feet in the outdoor cafes and restaurants, looking for whatever scraps, bits and pieces they can get. They're very well used to to the people and their surrounding areas. They can be seen everywhere. This is the ibis. is the Australian bush turkey. Here you can see one walking about in front of me. Just searching around, looking for whatever bits and pieces he can get. Unaffected by man. I'm very popular. I'm quite a few of them all around the place. The Australian bush turkey. Something I've seen quite often around here. The small lizards. Not really sure of the name of this boy, but you see them quite often scooting around the place. Also in the gardens and parks, you very often see plovers just walking about, pecking through the grass. Here you can see a couple here. Just doing what they do best on their daily routine. The plover. Such an elegant looking bird. And a very common bird around probably the whole of Australia is the Australian pigeon. You get the Australian crested pigeon. They're seen in the gardens, parks, all around the place. Here's a pair displaying the male bird chasing after the female. You hear and see these very often. And here's another very, very popular bird to be seen in the gardens, the parks. They'll come up to your feet, really cheeky, not scared of people at all. And some magpie larks. Beautiful black and white, black and white striped mark birds, the magpie lark. You can see the difference in the male and the female. The male having the black chest, female having the white chest. The magpie lark. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode of David's Bird Room from Coffs Harbour, New South Wales, Australia. As much as I have enjoyed making it and sharing it with you. So I'll see you all next month back at David's Bird Room. I'll catch up with you all then. Take care everybody. Cheerio. Bye bye. So that's it for this episode 
David Bourbon, Gritty Seas, or Season 3, Episode 1, Great Seeing You All. Now, any comments, stick them down and below. Any questions you want to ask about what I'm doing, how I'm doing, if you want any advice, don't be scared to ask. You can get me on the comments down below, you can get me on the Facebook, David Bourbon Facebook. Now, what I'm all asking you to do is, Help this big channel to grow. Like, subscribe, share. Tell everybody out there what you're seeing here at David's Bourbon. So, thank you all for looking in and coming on in and letting me share with you what's happening here. So for now, y'all, take care. Cheerio. Bye bye.